The crews in this A-final of the women's single skull, lane one, Bulgaria, lane two, New Zealand, lane three, Netherlands, lane four, USA, lane five, Australia, and lane six, Lithuania. So most people pick Caroline Fly in the centre lane, but uh, you never know. Woman in lane one. We'll get a look at her shortly. This is Slava Angelova. There she is, 25 years of age. Coached by her husband, Andrian Angelov. Just a youngster, really. She's been in A finals throughout this season, really moved on from last year. In lane two, the Olympic champion from New Zealand, Emma Twig from the Hawks Bay Rowing Club. New mother of the 36 year old. Caroline Florine, 2022 world champion, pretty much unbeatable since last year. Don't want to put the hex on her. Dad Ronald won Olympic gold in 88 96. Her mother, Auntie Reenhag, was a gold medalist in 1994 for Germany. There's Cara Kohler, the Californian bronze medal in the London 2012 Olympics, part of the women's quad. In a centre lane, sculpted beautifully here. Tara Rigney, Australia's hope for a medal. Coached by Ellen Randall, the woman from Sydney University Boat Club. And on an outside lane, outside chance of the medal, the 27-year-old Victoria Sankute. Must be inspired, I think, by that Lithuanian women's double skull. Coached by Karolis Sunklodas. And all these women qualified for Paris. Will we see? Caroline Florine take yet another gold medal at the end of this race. Well, she blew a kiss to the camera during that roll call, so I think she's feeling pretty cool, calm and collected. The world champion having a fantastic season. Can anyone challenge her today? I think we've seen a great step up from Cara Cola at this regatta. Yeah, Caroline Florin, surely the athlete to be give, looking confident as she has throughout the last two years, really, when she's been dominant in this single skull. Interesting seeing those compression socks. I've not seen her wearing them before. Have I not been looking properly? Oh, good shout, Greg. I think she has worn them before, but uh, maybe not. So I noticed Tara Rigney had her hand in the air earlier, and uh, I don't know if they're calling over to maybe remove a bit of weed from the water. Well, uh, I did hear in the B final of men's single skulls that the Serbian athlete Nick Pimenov felt he had some algae or some weed drag his boat at the 1,000 metre mark. One reason maybe why he went off the pace in that second half of the race and didn't grab a Paris qualification slot. Yeah, and I spoke to Peter Haining, who's over here to collect to uh, give out medals, and he told me he's actually also been out on the water collecting weed. So I was talking about the fact it's a team effort, um, that everyone's getting involved. He's been out with the um, rock pooling net, tidying up the course and helping everyone to make it ready for this top, top level competition. The heartbeat gets you every time, doesn't it? Well, it's on the screen, but Caroline Florin's still sitting at backstops, looking very relaxed. So I think although they're playing that music, I'm imagining they haven't actually done the call over. We can see the motorboat just to the left of the screen there. It looks like they're still fishing something out of the water. So these athletes will come forward once they're called to attention by the umpires, but that hasn't happened yet. They're running about two minutes behind time at this stage. And if you're in this sculling race, you'd want to have a few moments just for the water to settle as well. If there has been a motorboat just moving around, the last thing you want is five strokes into the race to hit a launch wash, a motorboat wash that's left on the course. Relax, ladies, relax. So it's funny looking Cara Cola there sitting in the centre. She won a bronze medal back in London 2012 in the quad. A very experienced campaigner. So I'd be doing exactly what she's doing, which is sitting with my legs flat, going, I really don't want to start right now. Let's not be rushing to get this thing on. Yeah, you do get that in the summer. It's a problem. Area. Quite a few courses, of course, on this Sava Lake course in Belgrade, no exception. 
Yeah, I'm looking at Caracola, they're still sitting at, at backstop, still sitting and looking relaxed, staying calm. The other Scullers have all come forward. She comes forward into that position now, as I'm sure they've been called to attention. The callover's happening, and we're ready to go. Held there for a few seconds, but they're away now. Tara Rigney blasting out along with this woman, the favorite Caroline Florine of the Netherlands. Great conditions out there on the water now, really not much to speak of at all. So great conditions for racing. Yeah, wonderful conditions we're having for these finals on Sunday. This is the second last race we're bringing you. It's the women's single skull A final. And you'll see Caroline Florine has a small lead. Cara Cola is in that white boat, slightly behind where she'd want to be. And Tara Rigney having a great little start here in boat number five as well. Magic from Tara, isn't it? Looking at the uh, Lithuanian scholar Victoria Senkuto there. She's kept pace with Rigney. Brilliant start by the Lithuanian. It is the Dutch Scala leading out by, what, half a boat deck? Yeah, wow, look at her push out now. She's the fastest moving boat on the course. And I've spoken about the profile that the Dutch crews have been racing with. Most of them in this coming into this second quarter of the race, she's perhaps going a little bit earlier than we've seen the other crews. But this has been a similar profile across the team. Get themselves out into a commanding lead in that second 500 and then let the rest of the crews scrap for the minor medals. Well, Dutch sculling is definitely on a high. And we see at the front of the field, Caroline Florine there. But here we see the Sydney cider, Tara Rigney tracking that move and on the far side, unsurprisingly, it's Emma Twig, the Olympic champion, who's also just got a small overlap with the race leader. I don't want to sound patronising, but I think she's doing really well, Emma Twig, considering some of the results she's had last year and this year. She's in contact. Got to be a good start for the Hawks Bay woman, the 36-year-old, in contact with Caroline Florine and in a medal position. And we see Emma Twig there on screen, no doubt. Her wife and her young boy, Tommy, will be watching from home along with all of her family and friends. And Tara Rigney also, it's very late in Australia and New Zealand, but all of her family and friends watching from back home. We've seen these three women on the podium pretty much exclusively at the events that they've all attended. They were on the three on the podium last year at the World Championships. Can they keep themselves there or are we going to see a challenge from the American Sculler in the middle of the course who I fancy to put in for a challenge? Well, Cara Cola from America will want to break up those three who were together also at Lucerne on the podium, the gold, silver, bronze. And it's always this woman, Caroline Florine, who is at the top in the centre with the gold medal. Let's see how things start going. Emma Twig is looking good there, easing away in that silver medal position. As you said, Martin, she's making a very good job of this. She's got the bronze in Lucerne, just going with that pace. The overlap is not there anymore. Uh, this Netherlands skull has opened up a big enough gap. And this uh, Dutch sculling team have so impressed out here as we look at Emma Twig just before 1 a.m. in New Zealand. And Charlotte, Emma's wife, will be looking at this and smiling and hoping she can retain that silver medal position from Tara Rigney. On the far side, Angelova is in there. There's Tara. Picture of Tara there and Emma Twig, of course, between last year's World Championships and this year's World Championships, she became a world champion in the beach sprint solo as well and competed recently at the Australian and Oceania Coastal Rowing Championships. So trying her hand at the new and emerging discipline of beach sprints as we ride here with Cara Cola sitting in fourth position. But through the thousand, it was the Dutch, New Zealand, Australian, followed by the American Sculler. Well, we have already seen Cara Cola of the USA scull through Tara Rigney this week from Australia. So I guess she's going to have a little psychological advantage right now. And uh, it does seem like the American is tracking the move of the Australian. You can see they're all at 36 strokes a minute so it's purely just distance per stroke that's helping Caracola track this down and Desislava Angelova from Bulgaria over in lane one we saw a massive sprint from her in the semi-final to get through into the final she is actually starting to appear here on screen she's only about a boat length down on the American she could be dangerous in this last 750 meters Matwig showing the form that took her to Olympic golds but somebody else has come on the stage 
last year, Caroline Florine sculling beautifully. There's Cara Cola, expect a strong second half from the Californian. She is moving, but Tara Rigney is holding that bronze medal position. Caroline Florine out in front. Yeah, good response from Tara Rigney to hold that move from Cara Cola. It's showing only two meters on that graphic. It looks like more than that to my eye. It looks like it's about three quarters of a length, but let's see how this goes. We've still got about 600 meters to go. Caroline Florine out in front, watched by her parents. Watched by the Dutch nation, watched by the Dutch team. In second place, Emma Twig. Has she got what it takes to hold that silver medal position? Tara Rigney, what's her challenge going to be? Cara Kola, has she got something to offer? As they come through the 1500 metre mark, no doubt about the race leader, Caroline Florine from the Netherlands. New Zealand in silver, the Australian in third, but we can see the Aussie, Tara Rigney, she is moving. Her rate is up at 36 strokes per minute. She is the fastest moving boat on the course, along with the Dutch woman. I think that Tara Rigney might start to challenge here for that silver. I think she really could start to challenge for the silver. We thought Tara Rigney might get sculled through. Now it seems like quite the opposite is happening. She's now saved it for the last 500. She's looking to move it on. She's still only at 36 strokes a minute, but her boat is moving quickly. Emma Twig, gritting her teeth, still out there. No mistake, she went to try and beat Caroline Florine in that race, in this race today. She is closing slightly on the tiring Dutch woman, but Florine still looking good. That body rocking over off the back, beautifully loose in the shoulders. Good leg drive. Great leg drive. You can see that puff of the cheeks. You know she's hurting behind those sunglasses, but she'll be delighted to see the red boys. They know they're coming in for their final sprint for the line. Emma Twig is raising the pace to try and challenge for the gold and definitely hang on for the silver. Tara Rigney's going with her. I don't think anyone's going to get in amongst these three for the top three medal positions. It's still the Dutch sculler. She has led from pillar to post. She shows why she is the world champion and the one to catch. Emma Twig still hanging in there for second position at the moment. The Aussie is still about five metres down. I think she's going to run out of room here to get herself into the silver medal position. Tessa Slova Angelova, is she charging over there on the far side? It is Emma Twig. No, it's, she's, she's a bit out of it. Emma Twig in silver medal position. And it is Tara Rigney in bronze medal position. But Caroline Flogger once more, the Dutch woman comes up to the line, the near out sculler, coached by Michelle Darville, the Canadian, to take the gold medal. Emma Twig, a fantastic skull from the New Zealander to take silver, really stepped up there, Emma Twig. And in bronze medal position, Tara Rigney, yet another medal this afternoon for the Australians. The minor places went to Angelova, Kola, and St. Cute crossing the line just now. But really, apart from Caroline Florine, I thought the story of that race was Emma Twig taking it on. Yeah, well, Emma Twig's improved, hasn't she, from Lucerne, where she got the bronze, getting back up into silver medal position where she was last year at the World Championships. Last year, it felt like Tara Rigney sort of uh, announced herself with that bronze medal at the World Championships. She'd moved on to Lucerne. But, um, yeah, those three locked it, locking out the three medals, Sarah. I mean, wasn't she dominant, Caroline Florine, just all the way down the track? So impressive. It's going to be a big ask for anyone to catch her over the next year. She absolutely has been a stunner the last two world championships. I don't know. That's got to give Emma Twig hope. You know, she stepped on this year. Um, she stepped on, but still, it was over five seconds, the margin. That is... A massive margin, yeah, I think, okay. in the single to win by. But you never know, Emma Twig on the comeback trail following her Olympic championship back in 2021. Well, you see it confirmed there, the win for Caroline Florine ahead of Emma Twig and Tara Rigney. Caroline Florine.